This lesson deals with frequency response descriptors. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting on page 1. In chapter 10, on pages 14 to 15, we saw that replacing S by J omega allowed us to find the steady state response of a stable circuit just from its transfer function. In chapter 8, on pages 31 to 35, we plotted the magnitude and angle of various voltages and currents. This is called the frequency response of our circuit. What I've sketched over here is the frequency response of a circuit. Plotted the magnitude of the output divided by the input versus frequency, and also plotted the phase angle of the ratio, which is the angle of the numerator minus the angle of the denominator, versus frequency. This frequency range here, where we had very little attenuation, referred to as the passband. The frequency range where we have a lot of attenuation, referred to as the stop band. The cutoff frequency is where these two come together. We usually define that to be the point where the gain is dropped by 1 over the square root of 2. We'll see in the following pages as to why this particular frequency is picked. But it also has another name or interpretation. It's called a half power frequency. What happens at this frequency is that the output voltage has dropped by 1 over the square root of 2. Now the power out is proportional to the voltage squared. So if you take 1 over the square root of 2 and square it, you get 1 half. So the power that's delivered at lower frequencies is a certain value. And then the value at omega c is half that. A useful application of frequency selective circuits is filtering. What's sketched below here is the magnitude versus frequency of various filters. We're going to do this on a log-log scale. We'll see why in a few more pages in the notes. The first filter is called a low-pass filter, and we're passing low frequencies and attenuating or blocking high frequencies. In a high-pass filter, we're doing just the opposite. We're passing high-frequency signals, but attenuating or blocking low-frequency signals. In a band-pass filter, we're passing a band of frequencies, blocking or attenuating low, blocking or attenuating high frequencies. And just the opposite in a band stop filter. We're letting low frequencies through and high frequencies through, but blocking a band of frequencies. A term common in filters is called bandwidth. And this is defined as the frequency range spanned by the pass band. In this case, for the low pass filter, it's equal to omega c. In other words, omega c minus zero. This just goes back to dc. For a high pass, it would be infinity minus omega c. In other words, an infinite frequency range that we're passing. In the non-ideal filters, we'll see that they'll eventually come back down again. For a bandpass filter, the bandwidth is this difference of the two frequencies where the gain is dropped by 1 over the square root of 2. For a band stop filter, it's also referring to that same difference in frequencies, but this is the frequency where we stop the signal versus in the other cases where we pass the signal. And these are some of the descriptors of frequency response circuits. 